Hi there, and yes, it is little old Roy. Isn't that wonderful? But wait, I can hear some of you thinking, do I, do I, do I, do I know him? Okay, this gets a little weird and complicated, so let me try my best. Max Headroom was a fictional artificial intelligence character. Hi. Still alive out there? Good. This is Max. Although he was called the first computer generated TV personality, that was all parody. His computer generated appearance was simply the work of elaborate prosthetics and a blue screen. Please say hello to Max Headroom if this is working. There's Max right there. Played by the immensely talented Matt Frerer, Max Headroom became a pop culture phenomenon in the 1980s and early 90s. Mike! I go! No! Mike! I could have blocked that shot, 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 shot. Sure, Max. But the story of the character goes beyond a few Coca Cola commercials and TV appearances. Oh, hi. Do you remember the first time you tried kiss, kiss, kissing? <sighs> but now. And when you first tried Coke, I bet you said, uh-uh, not for me. But hey, let's not let first impressions swim. And let's try Coke, Coke, Coke again, shall we? Because once you've acquired that new wave taste, you're going to want to try it again, again, and again. Coke's delightful, the second. Catchy, isn't it? Catch the wave, Coke. Crush. After the explosion of MTV in the United States, Channel 4 in England was looking to capitalize on the popularity of music videos. But they needed a charismatic host who could weave the videos together and offer some commentary. Conceived by Rocky Morton, he envisioned a parody of the way music videos were currently being presented, which was a boring old talking head, and other than MTV was often hosted by a middle class white guy in a suit. Rocky wanted to take that idea, exaggerate it, and make it fully computer generated. or to at least appear that way. Who was it said that observing the United States is like watching an epic movie? Oscar Wilde? Woody Allen? Ma 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 Max Hedrum. Just think, they've got an actor for a president, economic advisors called projectionists, even their latest defense strategy is named after a film, Star Wars. Rocky and his wife slash creative partner Annabelle Jankel were known for their very dark, high concept, sci-fi like ideas. They would famously be known as the directors and visionaries of the, well, 1993 disaster film, Super Mario Bros. But that's for another video. Along with George Stone, the trio wanted to give this new TV host a complex backstory. One that they could hint at and, if successful, build upon. So with that thinking, in 1985, the Max Headroom Show hit the airwaves. And now on for... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet you do, Harry. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> oh, just chatting away to Harry back there. The show and character were an immediate success. It was unique and unlike anything seen on television at the time. If that hasn't got Oscar written all over it, I'll eat my invitation to the award ceremony. Not only did it captivate audiences, it fooled critics, as Max won a BAFTA, a British Academy of Film and Television Arts Award for computer graphics, despite the fact that, well, he was not computer generated. Hey, who are you talking to? What? Knowing they had a hit on their hands, Channel 4, in partnership with HBO, launched Max Headroom 20 Minutes Into the Future, a cyberpunk television film that would offer the backstory for Max. Gorister, I'm calling you on the link. How come this story is pulled? Edison, it's pulled. So here goes. The film would introduce Edison Carter, played by Matt Ferrer, a TV reporter who discovers that his employer, Network 23 has created a new form of subliminal advertising that can be fatal in some viewers. In some subjects, it causes a short circuit. Some particularly slothful, perpetual viewers literally explode. As simple as that. All of this is taking place in a dystopian future, by the way. 
While trying to escape the network to expose their evil plans, Edison suffers a head injury when he hits a low clearance sign labeled Max Headroom 2.3 meters. The story gets a little complex from here, when a young scientist from the network computerizes Edison's brain, but then decides to dispose of both the computer files and Edison's body. But the hired goons, who are to dispose of everything, end up selling both of them on the black market. Max Hedron. He could have his own show. Big Time. This is Max Hedrum on Big Time Television. And what I want to know is, don't Eskimos ever get bored with their weather forecast? Eventually, Edison wakes up and teams up with Max to take down the evil network. There's a lot of other sci-fi stuff that takes place in between. When did you first learn that blipverts cause people to spontaneously explode? Well, I learned bollocks. Parrots are only one rung above politicians, though. You always know when they're lying, their lips move. But this is the backstory as to why he's a computer-generated character and why he's called Max Headroom. Interestingly enough, since the character's boom in popularity, governments actually changed signs from Max Headroom to Maximum Height. Like the Max Headroom show, the TV film received rave reviews, which prompted a 14-episode series for ABC simply called Max Headroom. All of this is happening while the original music video series is still running, which ran for three seasons and a Christmas special. Merry Christmas, Santa Claus. Merry Christmas, you're a lovely guy. And a random factoid, Channel 4's Max Headroom Christmas special was written by Game of Thrones' George R. R. Martin. And if Max wasn't popular enough, Cinemax ran a six-part series in 1987 called The Original Max Talking Headroom Show. And like all great pop culture phenomenons, Max would transcend the silver screen into the world of advertising. In 1986, Max would become the spokesperson for New Coke, urging Americans to catch the wave. This is my guest. I heard you were big time in the old pop is. Well, I'm going to take that as a no comment. So, nitty gritty time. What I'm talking about, and you're not, is that more people prefer the new refreshing taste of Coke over Pepsi. Sweating? It's true. More people are, as we Cokeologists say, catching the wave. wave. Catch it if you can, can. Catch the wave. Coke. <sighs> but despite his popularity in the clever adverts, which were directed by a young Ridley Scott, new Coke was a bomb. And just as he was everywhere, by 1988, he was nowhere. His shows were cancelled, New Coke was done, and the world had seemingly moved on from the character. It's been a great show. <laughs> we're sorry that it's through. Goodbye is such a sad word. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention something known as the Max Headroom Incident. On the November 22nd, 1987 broadcast of Doctor Who, two Chicago-based TV stations had their signals hijacked in an act of video piracy. In the middle of the program, after some distortion, a video of a person wearing a Max Headroom mask was displayed. The video is creepy and weird and features someone getting spanked in the end. It's, it's all bizarre. The first signal hijack lasted about 25 seconds, with the second lasting close to 90 seconds. Imagine you're watching Doctor Who and suddenly this appears on your TV screen. 
It's a little reminiscent of the purge emergency broadcast signal. By the 1990s, Max Headroom would vanish into the sunset, only to appear again in the late 2000s to help promote Channel 4's switch to digital. I was big one. Back in the 80, 80s, I was bigger than big. Yeah, I know. While I never truly experienced Max Headroom in his glory days, I have since become a huge fan. He's way before his time, is oddly captivating and quite funny. So let's not be formal. I'm going to call you George. Okay, and you can call me Mr. Headroom. <laughs> Great. No problems there. Are we happy? I'm delirious. Oh boy. Static. No, actually, George, I don't want to be unfair. I'm just lovable old Mac. Back, 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 back. To everyone else. So what makes you different from others? What say you? Were you a fan of Max Headroom? Do you think this type of character could work today? Let us know in the comments.